Welcome to a special edition of the Patch Overview. I'm Jet, here with Morello, and we're in the Nocturne Theater at Riot Games to give you guys a sneak peek of the big changes we have coming up in Season 3. What we wanted to do is come by personally and talk to you guys about what you can expect from a gameplay perspective so it doesn't blindside you or take you by surprise when you log into the game and see all these changes. So before we get into anything, we have a new cool chapters menu to navigate this video. If you miss something and want to go back to it, or if you're looking for a specific section, just check up there and it'll take you right to it. Big thing at the start here items. We've done a lot of work on them. What's the big goal we've had behind the item changes? I think with items, honestly with everything, it's about variety and options and lots of different ways to do things, right? You kind of go to your favorite build site, whatever that might be, you know, look at the build, go, yeah. okay, I memorized that, and then you just do that every game. Mm -hmm. Not terribly interesting, not full of lots of cool decisions, right? So that's the kind of thing we want to fix so you can have multiple different ways you build. One example of this on the new items is the new Mana Mune. Mm -hmm. um, Mana Mune is very similar to what you you kind of know and love about it right mm -hmm. now, but it has a special caveat that if you get the mana maxed out on that thing, it upgrades itself into the Muramana. And what that does is it has a toggle on it that if you use it, you dump mana on every auto attack and it does additional damage based on how much mana you have. So someone like Korka who really likes to spam spells and can get into mana trouble could just build that item, spam away and still do lots of damage. Right, exactly. And now think about the different combinations he can build more mana to get more damage out of his mana muni, or maybe he wants to combine it with some other multiplier, all sorts of things like that. It makes for different types of decisions based on the way you want to play and the character you're using. So let's talk about supports a bit, because there's someone who don't have much choice right yeah, now. Yeah, not, not always go, the best. Yeah, they go hard at gold, <laughs> Philosopher's Stone, and then if they're lucky, they'll get an Aegis of the Legion or like a Zeke's Herald or something. Right, right. We've mix that up a bit, they have more choice now. The best way to explain this and follow me, fo follow me through <laughs> this, give me a second, is we've removed Heart of Gold is one of the first changes we've done here. Right, and that sounds really weird because how are supports supposed to get gold now that they don't have Heart of Gold? Right, and we figured if they're buying the same items every game and that's what's giving them gold, why aren't we just giving them the gold through other methods so they can buy cool items, mm -hmm. right? So for example, we've removed some of the gold from farming, just not Dominion levels or anything like yep. that, and pushed it into ambient gold. So okay. now, supports are getting a greater percentage of the amount of gold you're getting on a team. So supports weren't getting much gold, and they were having to build the same items to even get any gold. But then, all that gold they do get, they have to spend on wards. So we've, we've lessened the ward burden a little bit with a couple of interesting solutions, one of which I'll talk about right here, which is we affectionately call Ward Dropper. Mm -hmm. And it's an item that every time you go back to base, it gives you four charges, and you can drop wards with that item, kind of like what you see on okay. a Rados Lantern, right? Yeah. The interesting thing, though, is while you get a bunch of free wards for this, you can only have two out from this item at a time. So you're not doing like mass coverage like when it's time to like ward the whole map for a Baron or something. Yeah. But when you're trying to ward your lane and build up some gold, definitely extremely gold efficient. You talked about an AD caster at a months ago <laughs> and we failed on delivering right. on it pretty much for a while. Do we have that coming into season three? What do AD casters got? Yeah, so AD caster item where I think is this question, yeah. right? And and yes, uh, we do. It was really hard for us to actually do kind of in our normal release cadence. But in this kind of item overhaul, we've had a really good opportunity to take a look at a lot of these underserved kind of classes mm -hmm. that don't have good items for them. AD Caster is a great one. Let me talk about one of the items we've done for them, sure. which uh, is Black Cleaver. Uh, Black Cleaver has actually been changed to be an AD Caster item because it kind of sat in the same house with Infinity Edge and Bloodthirster mm -hmm. and Black Cleaver. And it, I guess kind of like a Highlander of items. Oh, there can only be one of those guys that's going to be the best. So we just said, well, Black Cleaver can go do a different thing. Can go be an uh, mm -hmm. AD Caster item. So what you're going to see from that from now on is it builds out a Brutalizer, first of all, which right. is instantly, really awesome. you're on the right foot, right? And then it also has just 80 health and then all the stats you see on Brutalizer, plus an interesting, unique passive that shreds armor on all of your physical abilities, stacking up to a certain amount. Can I still do the stuff I'm used to? Like, we've changed a lot. My build's still gonna work. Right, and that's and that's one thing we wanted to be really sensitive to is it, it's, there's a very careful balance of we wanna add new stuff and new options and we wanna fix the problems in the game, mm -hmm. but we don't wanna make League of Legends feel like a totally different game. Yeah. We don't wanna make it totally alien. We don't want your old stuff to just be like, oh, that sucks now, right? Mm -hmm. So there are situations on an AD carry, for example, you still wanna go Infinity Edge Phantom Games. It's very straightforward. It's very effective at what it does. But now what we want is other equally attractive options that do different things other than just single target damage. And that's how we're gonna create choice for players and items. 
So everyone really getting a whole bunch of new options. Right. I know what I really want to hear about, though. It's the jungle. <laughs> of course you want to hear about the jungle, chat. <laughs> I definitely want to hear right. about the jungle. <laughs> so <laughs> we do have some new items in the jungle, but we're doing a lot of jungle changes, and I want to mm -hmm. talk about those changes, and then I think the items make a little bit more sense. The big thing I really want to do here is I think there's a problem right now where there's only a small subsection of jungler types that are usable mm -hmm. at high level or skilled play in League of Legends. You know, the kind of fast AoE wave clear, yeah. kind of knock through the camps really fast, camp lanes and gank, right? <laughs> The problem with that is that's elbowing a lot of other jungler types and a lot of characters out of the picture. So what we're going to do is we're, we want to open up that variety back closer to what it was like in between season one and two. And how we're going to do that is by changing kind of the health on the jungle camps and the power on the jungle camps. All right. So for example, you know, the race camp, it's right now, it's, you can kill all four of those guys pretty quickly, mm -hmm. right? What I would like to do, take health and power from those little monsters and put them on the big one. So that's going to make it so we can open up some more options for different types of junglers. Yeah, so that way, a single target jungler like Trundle or Warwick can just clear that camp out faster, but an AoE jungler might take a little bit more time to do it. Than they do currently, yeah. We're not trying to, like, marginalize AoE junglers, yeah. right? But we're going to have to find a good equilibrium there to make sure you can have single targets, sustain, high gank, high farm, you know, AoE, all these different types of junglers have different strategies, different uses. And your play style and preference or the way you want to impact your team can be different based on some of those decisions. So in season two, when we first changed around the jungle, mm -hmm. one of the big things was to make ganking and farming kind of an equal trade-off. Right. But what happens if you just sit in the jungle and farm all the time is you tend to fall pretty much hopelessly far behind by the end of the game. Yeah. That's getting changed up in season three. That's a big problem right now because it means that you're kind of all or nothing and all you're doing is ganking the whole game. If that falls flat or the other team outplays you at one point, you fall even further behind. Yeah and it gets really out of control really fast. And it also means there's only one strategy for jungle. What we'd like to do is increase the rewards as the game goes on, so they get higher and higher, so that by the end of the game, you're gonna be able to actually convert that into real gold for real items, while kind of managing, do I gank now, or do I farm more? And that actually becomes more of a real decision than I think it is currently. Okay, so with ganking, a lot of times early on in the jungle now, a jungler will take the red buff or the blue buff, then go straight to a lane and pretty much decide it for whoever's in that lane. Mm -hmm. That's not really something we're okay with, is it? It's it's okay to have early ganks, but I think the extent we see the lane pressure early right now is, like you said, it's deciding lanes. Okay. And it's taking power away from the people who have to play in those lanes for the next 20 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. We want to make it so there's a little bit more choice there as well by making the jungle a little harder, making it a little okay. bit more dangerous. Um, you know, right, they're going to hit harder, there's going to be some changing to leashing rules, things like that that are going to affect this. But to kind of smooth this out a little bit so you can still use a lot of junglers, mm -hmm. we're adding a new item that's kind of a starter jungle item that does a lot of things to help you get better clear times and safer jungle clears. All right. Now, the choice there is you could either do that, take kind of a more farming approach and gank later, get to the levels you want to earlier, or you could go for that rush gambit of get the boots early like you do now and go for that lane and just see what happens. And if it works out, hey, great, you're going to be ahead. If it doesn't work out, you're going to have to go lick your wounds a little bit. So it sounds like jungle pressure is actually down a little bit early. Yeah. But then later in the game, once they've farmed up, once they've really powered up in their jungle, they'll have cool items and be kind of a carry out of there. Uh, right now, junglers have a massive effect early game and are deciding the game kind of disproportionately. Mm -hmm. But then later in the game, all those cool actions they're doing aren't paying off for them. They're just kind of setting up the rest of their team to do it. We want that jungler to be able to stay relevant late game, but we do want to remove some of that early pressure. But we have more change even. The masteries have been moved around. There's a lot of change there. The defensive tree is an example of this, really. Uh -huh. You take armor and magic resist on almost every character. No matter what tree, you just put the early points in there. Is that too much power to be giving from the early parts of the trees? We don't like that. What we want to happen is if you really outplay your opponent in lane, you should be able to kill that opponent. I think a combination of number of defensive factors, including those early masteries, is making that a lot less able to happen. We also want to make it so that if you want to get tanky and you want to get defensive, dive into that defensive tree. Don't just don't just dip your toe in, go all yeah. in. And then that's kind of an interesting trade-off. Another thing with the masteries is a lot of times the offensive and defensive trees were kind of the only ones that got used. 921, 210, and mm -hmm. back and forth between those. The utility tree was kind of neglected. We spiced that up a lot. Uh, there's a new mastery I really like to talk about, which is every time you attack an enemy champion, you get a little bit of gold. Okay. And then if you do melee, you get more gold, just because right. that makes sense, right? My a little shout out to support players, because that's very much a support mastery mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, especially with the amount of poke and harass they do in lane as opposed to last hitting. So there's some stuff like that you can look forward to seeing in. If you go deep into that utility tree, you're going to get some interesting and unique effects. So that's a lot of change that I'm really excited for. But the question is going to be asked, this is really disruptive. 
you know, this is going to be really hard to balance. What do we say to that? The preseason in between two and three or in between whatever seasons is the time to do these types of changes, right? It's, they need to be done. You know, mm -hmm. our players have been asking for these things, and we agree. It's just we need to do it when it's not going to disrupt the tournament season, when it's we have an opportunity to let players try it out and iterate rapidly on it yeah. on a live environment, right? And that's what we're going to do with this right now. We have, we have some time until season three starts. Our goal is to get all this kind of like, Okay, let's throw it all up in the air. Let's get it all, all the exciting stuff out there. And now let's get it really kind of understood and balanced before season three actually starts. And we're going to be watching this stuff like a hawk to make sure that happens. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So for you guys, if you want to get more details on everything we've just talked about, we barely scratched the surface. We have online resources you guys can check out, as well as just give your feedback on what you think. Other than that, we're done here. Thanks for watching. Thanks.